Hey everybody, just want to give you a shout out real quick on the front of this video and let you know that this channel is under siege. They are in meltdown that they cannot stop this channel. And I've received more than a dozen copyright claims by Murder Rap and Greg Kading trying to get my channel shut down. And I just want to let all y'all know that if there's content here that you want to repost on your channels, feel free to repost it because this channel may not be here forever. And you're welcome to download this and post it wherever you feel it needs to be because the establishment, the corruption that is behind the murders of Tupac and Biggie is doing everything they can not to be found out. And we're finding out that it leads to corrupt places. There was a scam that was being run in Compton, and it was a DA rejection that was happening on cases. And then they would just lose track of the evidence, and that evidence would go missing out of the evidence locker. There wouldn't be a prosecution, but the evidence would supposedly be sent off to the FBI to be destroyed, but it never made it there. The FBI had no records that the evidence ever made it there. And that evidence would be sold off by the corrupt Compton PD who was behind both murders of Tupac and Biggie. And so they are in meltdown right now trying to figure out how they are going to shut down this channel. And I would just say, if you want to download this, if you want to repost it in a foreign country, on a site, wherever you want to post it, please post this information so that it gets out. Because the truth has bubbled up. They know it. They know that they're exposed. They're all joining ranks, closing their ranks to try and keep from going down for all the murders that they're behind. Remember that when the corrupt Compton PD was shut down and replaced by the sheriffs, the murder rate went way down, which tells you the cops were behind the murders. And there's no statute of limitation on murder. They don't want to be caught. That's why they're closing ranks. So please repost this wherever you see fit. Thank you. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking Pac, watching it. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to it. Have you gotten a chance to talk to Michael Carlin? He was working with Russell Poole right before Russell Poole passed. And it seems like he's getting pushed outside of the conversation. Now we need to check out another part of Michael Carlin's theory. Reggie Wright Jr. and the allegedly dirty cops who he and Suge Knight was bringing into the inner circle of death row. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. You know, we got a lot to cover up. Well, who do you think killed Tupac? I believe Orlando Anderson killed Tupac. Are Sharitha and Reggie Wright Jr. telling the truth? Michael Carlin doesn't think so. Orlando wasn't even the shooter, you know? He was actually a good kid, too, you know? You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. You know, we got a lot to cover up. So, guys. What's going on? Uh, Kading, Greg Kading is out. His lawyer won't let him do it, so. So we've been waiting around for Kading all day. And yeah, and he now is he's on the show. Really, I wanted to talk to him because there's so much to ask him. Yeah. But them theorists, they come up with all kind of make-believe. Message, then they come and talk to Buntry. He denies it and all of that, and they call me. Say, Little Ranch. We, you know, you know, we don't believe you had anything to do with this anymore. So who, who's number one suspect when you hear police in Compton handcuff? Reggie Jr. Hmm. Once Rafael Perez broke in there and stole that motherfucking shit, then the whole, I see the investigation was going towards the cops. We want the cops. We don't want you, TPD. Like, you tell, tell us about the cops. I know it's a lot of crooked cops. And I, I could have I turned in them Reggie, them, them uh, David Max, them, you know what I'm saying? 
I didn't say a motherfucking thing, but... Officer Kevin Gaines never worked for Death Row Records or CEO Suge Knight. Kevin Gaines worked for Nightlife Management, owned by Sharitha Knight. Throwing your hints. <laughs> I'm dry snitching like a motherfucker. About 9.30, I get a call from the captain of the sheriff's station, Cecil Rambo, who I knew personally and all, because he heard from the sergeant at the scene that the truck of the victim that had got shot at this gas station was registered to Reggie Wright. Uh, it didn't say of death row, although it was a death row vehicle in Reggie Jr.'s name. Was uh, The driver was shot at the scene and somebody ran. And I said, Cecil, how the heck I get here if I had anything? That ain't me. Throwing your hints. <laughs> I'm dry snitching like a motherfucker. Everybody started getting killed. That was in a whole entourage. I know. I Everyone. Hear you. I hear you. Okay. Everyone started Mac, getting killed. Maybe not Mac, but Gaines. But then Mac went to jail, and then Perez went to jail, and those were the three closest confidants of no, uh, of no. Is what some people say. But maybe the closest true. confidant of sure was Buntry. Okay. Heron. Heron got killed first. Over Fairfax and Washington, got shot 17 times broad daylight. Buntry got killed broad daylight in Compton at two o'clock. Okay. Guys on a bicycle. <laughs> Kill a, a bicycle drive by and killed him. Reggie Wright Sr. was the target. They thought it was Reggie Wright Jr. The car that they were in, the SUV, was registered to Reggie Wright Jr. Once Raphael Perez broke in there and stole that motherfucking shit, then the whole, I see the investigation was going towards the cops. We want the cops. We don't want you, TPD. Like, you tell, tell us about the cops. I know it's a lot of crooked cops. And I, I could have I could have turned in them Reggie, them, them uh, David Max, them, you know what I'm saying? I didn't say a motherfucking thing. But Thank you, Michael Carlin. I'm the uh, author of Tupac 187. I recently collaborated with former LAPD homicide detective Russell Poole and R.J. Bond about a book. It's called Tupac 187. We poured over 15,000 pages of case files. LEPD has a tremendous opportunity to break with the past and come clean about the corruption that once existed within the department. The Rampart scandal rocked the city of Los Angeles when it was learned that off-duty cops participated in bank robberies, cocaine distribution, and worked off-duty for death row records. When evidence began to surface that off-duty cops participated in the murder of rapper Christopher Wallace, the LAPD and City of Los Angeles participated in a cover-up. Now, Internal Affairs Case Number IACFNO140019 into the LAPD leak of a confession letter in the murder of rapper Tupac Shakur by a detective that has ties directly to the suspect implicated in that letter deserves to fully be investigated. Los Angeles has the best leadership ever assembled with Eric Garcetti, Mike Fuhrer, and Ron Galperin. Police Chief Charlie Beck has been part of a transformation inside of the corruption of Los Angeles, and he's been cleaning it up, but he needs to continue to clean out all of the residue of the Rampart scandal. Los Angeles Sheriff Jim McDonald is also a no-nonsense partner in uprooting corruption. Now I'd simply ask that the city of Los Angeles and law enforcement treat the murder of rapper Tupac Shakur and Christopher Wallace seriously by appointing someone that, as a lead detective, that doesn't have ties back to the lead suspect in these murders. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, everybody. Um, the thing that I showed you is the police commission in January of 2016. And I wanted to talk briefly about, I've already talked a little bit about Suge Knight and about how Russell wanted to apologize to Suge Knight. But I think it's important to talk about what was the reality that Suge Knight was facing. Now, we know from Lieutenant uh, Knox who was investigating death row records, and he was over at Can-Am Studios, that there were three separate hits that were ordered 
on Suge Knight at the time. And I've spoken to somebody who was at Club 662, who was part of a group of 30 guys, and they were going to kill Suge Knight if he made it to the club. So we know that there were, you know, things that were bubbling up and they were coming to a head. And it wasn't just, you know, the corrupt cops that were trying to topple Suge Knight. Other people were pissed off at him for whatever reason, jealousy or, you know, whatever it was. And, you know, they they blamed him for stuff that had gone on. So the upshot with all of this is October the 22nd, Suge goes to jail. And he's in L.A. County Jail from October 22nd of 1996 on. And he's there until April of 97. But upshot about him, if there were people that were trying to kill Suge Knight and they couldn't find him, from October 22nd of 1996, they knew exactly where Suge Knight was. And we know from somebody that we interviewed how he was shackled hand and foot. And so Suge Knight would have been a relatively easy target inside a Valley County Jail. So if there were three hits on Suge Knight and there was a price on his head, we know that the people on the streets have reached to the inside of the jails they have reached to the inside of the prison system. So for Suge Knight at the time, he would have been attempting to make sure that he moneyed up the people he had to money up inside so that he could have the protection he needed because those people that wanted to kill him on the outside had a lot easier job of killing him once they knew where he was. And he was inside of L.A. County Jail for a time. And then he went off to Mule Creek. And I think it's important uh, to talk about, too, that they changed the law. And they had, they had bugged the in, inside of Suge Knight's jail cell. And they got nothing from it. They also bugged and video recorded his meetings at Mule Creek and got nothing from it. And they videotaped to see who he was meeting with on the prison yard, and they got nothing from it. But Suge Knight wasn't worried about Death Row Records business as much as he was just staying alive. And one thing we know about Suge Knight is he's resilient. He was somehow able to stay alive in all this situation. And so his focus wasn't on, how am I going to kill Biggie? His focus was, how am I going to stay alive? Because he knew that there were people that wanted to kill him. And he knew it because he got shot up in Vegas, but he also knew it because he changed a lot of his security protocols in the aftermath of all that stuff. And we heard from Lieutenant Knox that there were three sh- three hits on Suge Knight that were ordered on Suge Knight. And we also know from other people that they were waiting for him at Club 662. And it's a completely different plot to take out Suge Knight. And they wanted to kill him. Had he shown up at the nightclub, likely he would have been shot inside the club more later. Hey guys, um, just want to, this is new, this just happened today, they are in absolute meltdown. The other stuff that's happened was, you know, Greg Kading doing uh, copyright uh, claims on all my videos, and looks like we were able to defeat those because we contested them, but now what are they doing? They are age restricting these videos, and so you're going to see it here, we have uh We've done a screenshot so you can see. And what's the one uh, video that they age restricted? It's the Russell Poole Memorial video. Does that make any sense to you? There is a thing which, you know, we did a video and it was uh, a memorial to Russell Poole on the day that, that he was born. It was a birthday thing, you know, happy heavenly birthday, Russell Poole. 
and they age restricted that video. I mean, they are in panic mode about this channel. And so what I started this channel with today, I'm going to end it with today too. And that is, if any of y'all want to, you know, post these videos on your platforms, your channels, if you want to set up a brand new channel and post all my videos, feel free to do it because this channel may not exist for long because these people are in absolute panic mode. They are in meltdown mode over the content here because it leads back to corrupt DAs, corrupt police, and God only knows how far up the food chain the corruption goes. But they're in panic mode because they know y'all are on to them because everybody out there who's been following this case for years, you know the details and you know that the corrupt cops were behind this murder and the murder of Biggie Smalls too. So more later. I provided the chief with enough uh, information and evidence that would warrant a full uh, probe. And at that meeting, I was ordered not to uh, investigate any further. Once Rafael Perez broke in there and stole that motherfucking shit, then the whole, I see the investigation was going towards the cops. We want the cops. We don't want you, TPD. Like, you tell, tell us about the cops. I know it's a lot of crooked cops. And I, I could have I turned in them Reggie, them, them uh, David Max, them, you know what I'm saying? I didn't say a motherfucking thing. But. You know, so we had a lot to cover up. So guys, what's going on? Uh, Kading, Greg Kading is out. His lawyer won't let him do it. So, so we've been waiting around for Kading all day, and yeah, and he now he's not coming. No really, I wanted to talk to him because there's so much to ask him. Yeah. Puffy was going up the stairs, and he said, "I don't care if Tupac die, I don't care if Biggie gotta die, and I don't care if she gotta go to prison for the rest of his life." Now, getting back to Russell, Russell was following in the footsteps of his dad, and he was able to work through the LAPD and have all the things that had to be done within the LAPD. He certainly knew the streets very well, and uh, his circumstances in his case were far more tragic because he was killed in the line of duty. Killed in the line of duty. If that's the case, did, Pac, did Tupac like mean anything? Because they never saw that case. Sometimes if you saw the first case, you might saw the second case. But that never happened, correct? Yep. But he did testify reluctantly that death row records security chief Reggie Wright Jr. once told him, quote, we're going to get those mothers who downed Pac. A reportedly missing photograph and former police chief Bernard Park's daughter came up during testimony today in the wrongful death lawsuit filed against the city by murdered rap star Biggie Small's mother. Uh, that to me was probably another motive for Chief Parks to want to squash a lot of the information. There was an effort to to keep a lot of the information away from the public. This declaration from a jailhouse informant named Kenny Boagney links crooked LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of rap star Biggie Smalls. Okay. Right, you see Suge was willing to say I didn't know those two cops but Maybe Reggie knew them. Never met those dudes. They never worked for me. They knew Reggie right. They didn't know me. You always will tell you, those are Reggie people. <laughs> and Reggie was fast to say, I didn't know them either. I was just interested in why he would point the finger at Suge so quick. He wouldn't say it to you, but he definitely pointed it. We call that dry snitching. That Perez told how he worked security for Death Row Records the night Biggie Smalls was assassinated, and how he and Mac used cell phones to set up the hit. Boagney now says he was instructed by an LAPD detective to share his story with no one else investigating Biggie's murder. Judge Florence Marie Cooper says LAPD may be involved in what she calls deliberate and intentional concealment of information. Jailhouse informant Kenny Boagney ties former LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of rap star Biggie Smalls. LAPD has withheld reams of other evidence as well, 
including at least two other jailhouse statements implicating dirty cops Mac and Perez in Biggie's murder. A thousand pages of information were withheld describing Mac and Perez's involvement in Biggie's murder. Three different jailhouse informants who offered to wear a wire were all turned down by LAPD. A wire, say informants, that could have caught jailed officer Perez boasting about his involvement with death row records and the Biggie Smalls murder. Judge Florence Marie Cooper lists all the new information she says links former crooked LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of Biggie Smalls. The sheer volume of the information, says the judge, belies any LAPD argument that it comes from just another jailhouse informant. Murder is pretty simple. The first person you go after is the spouse. Perez and was all involved. They were trying to kill me too, but see, because Perez and, and, and Reds and his good friends, and Perez and Sarita and Reds and his great friends, and so all those three together was trying to plot. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking pot, watching him. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to him. Atlanta wasn't even the shooter, you know? He was actually a good kid, too, you know? I'm quite sure if they, 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 they saw the first one, they would have saw the second one, because it's the same circle of people. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. Murder is pretty simple. The first person you go after is the spouse. All the artists at death row was willing to come with him. David Mack worked for you, right? No, ma'am. Never? Never met him. Never heard of him. Didn't know who he was until the accusations that he possibly did work for me. And that's been investigated by LAPD and all of that. Once Raphael Perez broke in there and stole that motherfucking shit, then the whole, I see the investigation was going towards the cops. We want the cops. We don't want you, TPD. Like, you tell, tell us about the cops. I know there's a lot of crooked cops. And I, I could have I could have turned in them Reggie, them, them uh, David Max, them, you know what I'm saying? I didn't say a motherfucking thing, but... Hey, why would I want a paper trail when I never brought him around nowhere? So if I'm going to hide him in secret, you think I'm going to let somebody catch a paper trail? They were paying cash by Snoop. Perez and was all involved. They were trying to kill me, too, but see, because Perez and, and, and Reg and his good friends, and Perez and Sarita and Reg his great friends, and so all those three together were trying to plot. How about Rafael Perez? Never heard of him until all the incidents happened. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking Pac, watching him. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to him. So why does everyone keep telling me that David Mack was working for you? Yeah. I never heard that. You've that, never heard that? That he worked for me. I, You've uh, never heard that? Wait a minute. Uh, let me clear that up. I'm saying by anyone that's credible, that will work around there or anything. Um, like I said, that was all investigated by LAPD. I turned over my payroll, everything. You always will tell you, those are Reggie people. <laughs> Atlanta wasn't even the shooter, you know? He was actually a good kid, too, you know? I'm quite sure if they, 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 they saw the first one, they would have saw the second one, because it's the same circle of people. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up.